interview. If you haven't heard it, check it out in the podcast archive on my site. I want to talk about how this concept of linear time is connected with money in our psyches. And it's a very nested, embedded concept. You've heard, we've all heard the expression, time is money. And it is money, but not in the sense that people traditionally use that uh, phrase to mean. You know, they're using it in the sense that the more time I waste, you know, the, the less uh, physical currency in the form of these fake uh, fractional reserve banking notes I could receive because I'm spending my time to basically get those uh, fake Federal Reserve notes, okay? It's all an erroneous concept of time used to justify spending your time to accumulate an erroneous concept of money. We need to understand how real time is connected with real money. And I'm going to explain what I mean by that. Another concept that we need to get out of thinking of time as being is endless repetitive cycles that lead to nowhere. As in the movement of an object around another object. Okay, In a single plane, this defining our year, for example, as the image I put here. Even look at the arms on a clock, on an analog clock. They just keep going endlessly, cyclically, on the same plane. Okay? In reality, the true movement of a wave function is like a spiral. Okay? Yes, it's an up and down progression and a backwards and forwards progression, but it's also, also a forward motion, a true progression progress okay that's what the shape of the spiral represents we take that spiraling energy into a three-dimensional form we get like a torus shape which is a, a very important shape that underlies uh, a lot of what we call physical reality it's the basic function of the field in which we exist it's the basic form of the field in which we exist at all levels the Taurus. So if we look at this endlessly repeating cyclical physical notion of time, it's going to do a couple of things. It's going to portray the idea of helplessness, of unchangeability, okay, of pointlessness. And this is what this linear concept of time is meant to do. This cyclical notion of time actually is what it is. That just one year follows the next, just like one week follows the next, just like one day follows the next, and it's endlessly repeating. It, it ultimately leads nowhere different, nowhere that changes. This is a poisoned worldview when it comes to how we look at time. And ultimately, we need to internally change that. It's a, it's a concept of worldview change, this change in our notion of time and how we see it, okay? So the notion of time being fake money needs to get thrown out, and the notion of time being an endlessly repeating cycle that ultimately leads nowhere needs to be thrown out because neither is true. We need to see time as it really is. It's an illusion created by our physical experience of reality. Ultimately, there is only the now. Ultimately, there is only one moment, the present moment. Okay? Now, let's take a look at how real time is connected with real money. You know, this whole, we've talked endlessly about how the fake monetary system, it calls itself the one I, mon I, mono, the prefix for one, and E-Y tacked onto it, mon I. And people will again dismiss this and say, oh, that's not really where the word money came from. In English, this is the reason 
that they set the word money up to be like this. It is supposed to be the incarnation of the one eye, which is the rep we went over again, practically ad infinitum, what the symbolism of the one eye meant. And that's on past podcasts. You can go back and listen to that. I won't be reiterating all of that, but I'll just essentially say it represents the true divine essence, the spark of the divine, the spirit, oneness, unity, consciousness, etc. The unified field of infinite energy. If you want to call it God, go right ahead. Many people are uncomfortable with that term. I have no problem with it, as I've said many times. That's what the real one eye represents. It's getting in touch with that infinite dynamic intelligence that underlies all of creation. Call it what you will. Okay? So, what we call money is currency. Okay? And ultimately, everything that exists is an infinite ocean of consciousness. So, it is all the sea. This is why they use, again, this concept of maritime law to usurp people's individual natural law rights, their inherent natural law rights, because they know that we're all living in a huge sea of infinite energy, of living dynamic intelligence, the unified field. It's a sea of consciousness. It's an ocean. Okay, and now this word C, as we follow this green language progression from money being related with time, okay, because time is a spiritual currency. It's a form of money in the true sense of the word money. We use time in a certain way. We will have an activated one eye. We will have an activated consciousness, spark of the divine living dynamic intelligence that dwells within all of us, it will become active. The one eye will be opened. Okay? So this concept of the sea, the ocean of awareness, of pure consciousness, is what we're dwelling in. Okay? That's why they use this concept of the law of water to usurp rights. These sorcerers, these dark occultic magicians, if you will, the occult controllers, whatever name you want to use for them, they're psychopathic so-called elitists that consider themselves elite, that are simply using mind control techniques to fool people into the belief in two religions, authority and money, neither of which actually exist, at least the fake money doesn't, in the sense of of a medium of exchange, even for the people who think, oh, money is only a medium of exchange of energy. That's fake too, ladies and gentlemen. We need to go past that in consciousness or we're never going to be free. We don't need exchanges of things that represent something else. If we want to have an exchange, exchange the real thing. As soon as you get into a proxy of the real thing, you're in trouble. So do I think even, you know, all of this symbolism is really what the real thing is all about? No. It's a symbol that represents something. A story can be told as a result. And information can be conveyed as a result of the understanding of that symbol. That's all. Could they actually do, have effects upon our subconscious and psyche? Absolutely. We are inherently affected like that. That's a function of our basic nature. Forms and archetypes do affect our subconscious. Okay, that doesn't mean that a symbol actually represents the real thing. The real spark of the divine is different than the all-seeing eye. It's just a symbol for that thing. Okay? So understand the distinguishment. Understand that uh, dichotomy that exists there. To go back to money and how time is connected with it in present moment awareness... We're all in this current sea of infinite energy. So, the true nature of time as a spiritual currency which we spend on what we pay attention upon, we're spending our lives, the energy of our lives, in the form of time and attention. 
and we get something in return for that. That's the true exchange that takes place. The true money, the mon i terry exchange. Okay? And that's currency. And we're breaking down the word currency in green language. It is the current sea, the flow of the water, the flow of the ocean of consciousness. Current means flow. And the sea, S-E-A, the ocean of awareness, current sea. That's what you're really saying phonetically when you say the word currency. It's the same. Yes, there's a T in there in the word current, but when you say it quickly together, it's basically phonetically pronouncing that same series of sounds, okay? That's what green language is. Now, current also means the present moment, and see also means to see as in to look at, to be aware of by looking at, which is where attention comes into it. So in the present moment, what we pay attention to is what we get in a form of currency, what we are currently aware of through looking, through paying attention. You see how this language works? It's all right there in front of us. These aren't coincidences. And this is something I know the left brain among us have the most enormous problem with this thing because what you know what they're really railing against you want to know what they're really upset about they want to convince themselves because they're in such a state of imbalance in the mind in the psyche in the actual brain that the universe is not a magical place ultimately that there is no such thing as a higher form of consciousness that doesn't operate according to their limited perceptual awareness coming from their left brain prison hood. That's what the people who d- totally dismiss green language, that's what why they think that way. Okay, It all comes from a shortcoming within the self to not want to look at a possibility. And I'm telling you, this isn't just a possibility. This is the language of creation that's always speaking to us. We just have to be open-minded enough and have our heart and our mind open enough to hear what is being told to us at all times and places. And sadly, many people are cut off from that flow, from that current. And as a result, they do not see. So what are some other financial terms connected with money? We have the word account. Okay, our, our currency goes into an account, right? But our current C, what we're paying attention in the present moment, right, goes into our account balance, okay? Our account, what we're going to be held accountable for under natural law, our true responsibility as an individual based on what we paid attention to and the knowledge that we received as a result on the show. We're talking about true present moment awareness and the development of mindfulness. And I was going through a green language exercise helping people to understand that time and attention is the real spiritual currency that we use to really advance and gain and progress within ourselves. That's what evolutionary progress is all about. See, we are activating in the present moment our attention. So that's what current C is. Look at it now. Pay attention now. Be here now. Be aware now. And as a result, We're going to gain through balance, true money, one eye, because that's how the one eye awakens. That's how it comes online through the balance of the brain hemispheres, through the balance of the energy of the heart, through the balance of love. The energy of consciousness, which brings balance. 
And this is a financial term. A balance is how much you really have. How much of the true one eye, the true mon eye, do you really have? Forget the fake stuff, the paper stuff. Isn't worth the paper it's printed on. I'm talking about the internal money, the spark of the divine. How much of that do we have within us? Well, that's directly related with our income, what we take into ourselves, what comes in. And that's all we've been talking about over the last few weeks, what we put into ourselves through our worldview, how we view ourselves and others, through our attention, the quality of our attention. What do we pay attention to? What kind of media do we take in? What kind of information do we take in? From where? What kind of sources? The food that we take in to our bodies, the water that we take in, that's all income. All of that is income. It goes into our account and ultimately creates balance so that we can have true money. And that's what time and attention are spent to create. It's all about money, just not the kind of money most people think about. Sadly, they think about the fake money all the time and give very little time and attention to the real currency, the real money. So hopefully you've enjoyed that little green language exercise and hopefully you understand it. Hopefully you know where I was going with that. If you can perceive green language, you're probably part of the way toward balance already. If you can't or if you snicker about that or if you dismiss it completely, you're probably in the prison of the left brain and likely to remain there unless you engage in the topic I'm going to talk about now, which is mindfulness. For those who are really su super trapped in that left brain modality, and are so obsessed with a, a this world is all there is worldview, you know, can't really grasp any higher spiritual understandings and are only concerned with the physical, the financial, the, the you know, uh, the political aspects of this world and this life. Well, that's definitely signs. Those are definitely signs of left brained prisonhood. Okay. And those who dismiss the occult in general, dismiss that there are correspondences that these individuals are using that relate to this type of language and these types of symbols. And it doesn't, as I've said many times, it doesn't matter whether any individual in particular believes in any of it. Things that you don't believe in can affect you. Believe it or not, your belief is not required for something to affect you in your life. You're not the arbiter of truth, meaning you're not the arbiter of what has any effect in this reality. That's not really up to you. You can determine how you handle it. You can determine how aware you are of it, but you're not really, de you're not really the determiner or the arbiter of what has effect here. Okay. You're not the creator of natural law. You're not the creator of the universe in case you haven't figured that out. But many people think, oh, if I don't believe in something, it doesn't affect me. Uh, we've gone over this many times. You know, somebody acting on a belief system can affect you, whether you believe in their beliefs or not. So it's a matter of knowing how many individuals who have wield, do wield power and influence in this world because of what they've gotten people to believe and accept as true, as real oftentimes which have, have absolutely nothing to do with reality or truth. And therefore, what they are, the, the actions that they're putting forward based on what they believe. You know, a, a fundamentalist in any given religion is acting on their beliefs. So their belief systems, since it's driving their behavior, is creating an effect in the world because their behavior has an effect on other people in the world. It's a very simple and logical thing to perceive. 
why anybody would even put forward the notion that, well, I don't believe in that stuff, so it doesn't affect me, is, is utter, it's utter insanity. It's nonsense. For anybody to think like that, in all honesty, they're a very immature child in a psychological development. Because it's a very clear and logical thing to see that you don't, your belief is not required for someone else's belief system to affect you in life as long as they're willing to act on their beliefs. Okay? So with that having been said, let's look at mindfulness. Because this is becoming the observer, watching your actions, stepping back from the role that is being played by you in the physical domain, not identifying with the physical five sense reality, stepping back from that and being able to watch your actions, being able to watch your reactions. And believe me, once again, I'll, I'll caveat this with the statement, I'm not always in this state 24 hours a day. As a matter of fact, before this show, I was getting very upset with something that was going on. Uh, a piece of technology not working right and I was falling out of that state entirely because again I'm not perfect and you know I have flaws but I try to work on it I try to catch myself as much as possible I try to look back in hindsight and then say I'm not gonna uh, I'm gonna uh, endeavor and strive not to fall out of that state of higher consciousness in the future and mindfulness the main practice the main way to become adept at being that observer of your actions is through the brain balancing technique of meditation. Mindfulness really um, can seem like a paradoxical term as well. And I've uh, hyphened it, mindfulness, the state of being full with the mind, okay? That's what this really means. It, me it means becoming filled with the true mind, capital M, okay? We could look at that as the soul, the development of the qualities of the soul. And this is done through, again, paradoxically, it would seem, emptying the mind. But we're not emptying the higher case M mind, the true mind. We're emptying the lower case M mind, the ego mind, okay? We're trying to purify the lower case M mind, the small me. We're trying to get that into a state of connectedness with the all mind. That's the difference between these two fo forms of the word mind. Mind with a capital M, mind with a lowercase m. We can say the same word and it could represent an entirely different con uh, concept based on the context we're using it in. Just as we did with self and self, the true self, for lack of a better term, versus the ego-identified, physical world-identified, lowercase s self, okay? As we showed on previous shows, the, the differences between those two concepts, the same applies here with the higher mind, the all-mind which we want to become imbued with, which we want to become full with, our vessel, to fill our physical vessel with that state of consciousness, that quality of consciousness. And we do that through quieting and ultimately allaying the chatter of the left-brained ego mind, the lowercase m mind, okay? This is like a turning down of the volume because that left brain is constantly chattering away at high volume. But this all mind, this higher case M awareness is always speaking, but it doesn't raise its voice. It always speaks in a calm, clear tone. It's a voice of holistic, creative intelligence and it's speaking to us everywhere at all times and places. It's the voice of balance. It's the voice of true reason. It's the voice of truth. And the way to quiet the left brain chatter is through the brain balancing technique of meditation. We're going to do an entire show on brain balancing techniques. If you're too left brained, as in this instance I'm talking about, you would employ some meditation to bring about some balance. 
the development of the true money balance connected with the heart, okay? Connected with true care. That's what this is all about. Conscience being awoken, all right? And again, this voice of truth, this voice of reason and this voice of balance never really speaks above a whisper. It doesn't yell in your ear, but it's always there. The, the, our job is to turn our volume knob down, as I depict here on the last image on the slideshow, so that we can connect with that voice of balance and that voice of truth. And what form of meditation should we use to do this? Well, there's infinite amounts of infinite forms of meditation. It's what works for you. There is no right way of meditating. There is no one way of meditating. You could look into TM. You could look into, you know, um, uh, brainwave meditation that is done through guided um, audio. You could look at musical meditation. You can get into meditation through dance. You can get into meditation through uh, rhythmic drumming. You, I can go on and on and on and name a million different ways. It's what works for you. There's walking meditations where you don't even need to be still to do it. Just look it up. There's tons of techniques. I might post some uh, uh, documents on different techniques of meditation with this podcast. But ultimately, at least do it for a small amount of time. Now, again, balance is called for. You don't want to get into right brain imbalance by meditating obsessively. As we've talked about in the past on the show, yes, you can do that. You can create more right brain imbalance, which is an, a different type of problem, by meditating too much. A, a form of balance has to be struck. And you'll know that you're in that state of balance when your, your behaviors start to show improvement in the quality of your life. Your life will improve. You won't have the kinds of same self-inflicted problems that you had in a state of left brain imbalance or right brain imbalance, whatever the case may be. At a future show, we're going to talk about right brain imbalance as well and how we can correct that with concentration techniques. And we'll talk about techniques to balance the brain toward the left side if you're uh, extremely right brained, you know, in a state of right brain imbalance. And then we'll talk about contemplation on a future show, which is a technique used to maintain balance once it is already there. Contemplation, the lost modality of human thought. So mindfulness ultimately is there to help us to turn down the chatter of the left brain so we can hear the voice of balance, that voice of holistic creative intelligence that is always speaking to us. And that's done through a med meditative technique that works for you. That's the key thing to keep in mind. When you, can, when you can engage this and start to quiet that chatter within you, you will start to go into what's generally referred to as pure consciousness. And you will then become the observer of your experience, the observer of your action. And you will be able to step back from identification with the physical domain. Not to say it's not important to engage in action in the physical domain, but you will, in other words, help yourself to be in the state of consciousness such that you are in the world, but not of it. And that's the goal of mindfulness. 